Hello, uh, I'm Nidal. Um, I work at the WD. I uh, joined WD 10 years ago uh, as a film engineer. I worked uh, closely with the small footprint uh, uh, product, then uh, moved to uh, dealing with the build systems. And for the past uh, three years, I'm an engineer at the CTO group where we conduct researches uh, over the risk 5 uh, target. Um, today, I'd like to present to you the work effort we did on the uh, risk 5 and uh, specifically on the uh, LLVM uh, inliner. Um, I'll talk uh, about um, the researches uh, itself, then the LLVM inliner the ideas we have and the suggested the solutions that we came up uh, with. We're still working on that. We don't have a final uh, solution, but I hope shortly we will uh, get there. Um, a small introduction about the work we do at uh, WD in, or, uh, in the research uh, that we're doing on uh, Risk Five. Uh, we are mostly uh, interested in decreasing the code size and uh, uh, making the code density more efficient uh, so we can uh, squeeze as much uh, uh, data uh, as we can inside the uh, small uh, footprint uh, uh, devices. We started uh, by comparing the uh, Risk Five target. We took uh, a few uh, is code samples. We even took uh, a real uh, product, a, a real WDC uh, firmware product, uh, converted into RISC V uh, uh, target, and start comparing um, this target with the uh, other targets that we used uh, internally. Uh, we saw uh, also uh, we used also uh, different compilers. Uh, some commercials, and we used also the GCC uh, compiler. We uh, went through the whole assembly and the, the generated code and tried to find out the uh, weak points where the Risk Five target um, stays behind uh, in the matter of compiler or in the matter of target. Uh, we uh, collected these uh, weak points and start uh, working on improving the uh, generated code, the assembly generated by the compiler uh, to make a, a smaller code size for a, a risk five uh, targets. We tweaked the compilers, we wrote new passes, we modified and tweaked uh, other passes and, uh, and now we're working on the uh, LLVM uh, itself. We did a few passes for GCC. Now we're working on the LLVM. And one of the uh, weak, weak points uh, we found in the LLVM was the, the inliner. The inliner itself has, uh, uh, as we saw, has a few uh, uh, we came across and we saw that also the the major limitation was the uh, the way the inliner itself works um, one of the examples uh, of the flows that uh, uh, we saw and we saw we uh, try uh, we're trying to improve is that uh, when we have um, a function like uh, D, for example, and has two callers to it. Um, if D was declared as uh, static, then the weight that the inliner gives this function uh, is not uh, equal uh, into uh, these two calls. Um, I'll try to uh, emphasize, emphasize um, a bit more. Um, if the compiler is trying to inline a D function inside the B function, it will calculate the uh, performance, the saving, uh, but 
it will always uh, it, it take in account that this function will be called from some other uh, place, some other uh, compilation unit or a C file. So it doesn't assume that um, this D function will be removed. There will gonna be another copy. So we will have two copies, one that goes into the B function and the other will uh, uh, stay as a standalone function. But when we tell the compiler that D is a static uh, function, meaning no other uh, compilation unit will call it, then when it uh, comes to inline D into C or into B, or both of them, it assumes that if it succeed to inline it into both B and C, then D will disappear. So this function will get uh, some kind of bonus in the threshold. And uh, we saw that the LLVM doesn't um, split this uh, uh, this bonus evenly in both uh, calls. This one uh, uh, flow, we can uh, um, work uh, on the LLVM itself, inliner itself and solve it. But the major uh, limitation that we saw, as I already mentioned, was the way that the LLVM inliner uh, works. Uh, the LVM, uh, LVM inliner will go through uh, the whole call graph until the uh, uh, bottom function and start inlining bottom top, meaning that it will go from A to uh, all the way through uh, B, C, D to E and F. Then it will uh, try to inline the function, the E function, into the D function. Uh, if it succeeded, then uh, it's okay. If not, both ways, it will jump to F function, inline it, try to inline it into D function, and so long until it comes to uh, A. We said this uh, uh, flow can have uh, some flows that uh, you don't want to inline everything, or if you had some more... Uh, information, you would surely inline uh, one function into another to make uh, uh, the code size uh, better for a uh, future inlining. From this point of view, we came into uh, a new algorithm or a new uh, way of uh, making inlining, which we call the uh, mutual inline. Uh, the credit for uh, the mutual uh, inline goes to Professor Yossi Ben Asher from the Haifa University, who work with closely who works close, closely with the uh, CTO group, and um, he developed this uh, uh, approach. Uh, the The way that uh, this algorithm is working is going through the whole call graph while meaning that we don't just drop to the last function, the E or F, and try to inline the bottom top, but along the way, while we're getting to uh, E or F, we will uh, collect as much uh, data as we, we can. So we will go from A to B or C. We will calculate the, the, the size uh, of A, B, and we will calculate the uh, saving. And this, what we call uh, the nodes, which are functions, and the, the call side for the calls itself, we call the uh, edges. We calculate the sizes of the nodes, and on each edge, we calculate the saving. This way, when we get to the E function, we know everything about the uh, call graph or the flow that uh, uh, we will have until we get to the E function. One of the uh, things that uh, the, uh, we saw that sometimes 
if you're having a a decision to inline the e function into d function and you can inline it it's not necessarily uh, the best choice because once you inline the function e into the function d d will uh, get a larger size and then this will this may prevent it from being inlined inside b and c but if we if the inliner has smarter enough to skip the inlining from e to d it will still have the opportunity to inline inside b and c and this may give a, a better a, a code density or a, a, a less code size uh, the way the inliner, the LLVM inliner works, uh, can't provide this insight because it will set inside the function, the E function, and look over the D function itself without knowing what's going on with uh, uh, the other components in the call graph. Um, other thing that we uh, saw is when we're passing a some sort of uh, um, constants in in one way or another, like enums and things. If we try to inline the a D function, uh, for example, in, into the C function, we have what we call a, a preparing a, the the arguments of the call. Uh, say we have this uh, example where. A prepare some um, variable, which is actually an enum or some sort of a, a constant, pass it to C. C will pass the same a, a parameter that got from A into D. When we look at this edge, what we call the call site, um, the compiler um, will assume that it has to arrange a, X numbers of arguments for, uh, to pass it from C into D. But if the inliner had the uh, visibility to look at A itself and say, okay, this here can be optimized, then D will be inlined into C, which is not the way that the LLVM inliner uh, do it right away, uh, right now. <clears throat> So this is the uh, mutual uh, inliner, and we're trying to uh, give this uh, information to the LVM inliner so it can uh, make uh, much wiser uh, decisions. What we have um, in our bag is um, three ways to uh, overcome this. Uh, first of all, we will try to integrate the mutual inliner inside the LVM uh, inliner where they will work uh, together. The other way is to replace the LVM inliner, which means that we will write another uh, inlining pass, which based on the mutual inliner where the user can choose whether to work with the original uh, inliner or the mutual inliner. And the third uh, um, opportunity here is to use, the, use what's called the inliner advisor, which is a pass that advise to the LLVM inliner uh, where and when to inline uh, uh, things. So we can um, implement the mutual inliner uh, algorithm inside an inliner advisor where the LLVM inline original inliner can ask it about uh, uh, about the uh, inlining opportunities where to inline and what to inline any questions guys So thank you, um, uh, uh, Nidal. Um, questions for Nidal? Uh, you can either open your microphone and ask them, 
or you can put them in the chat and we'll try and um, get them handled there. Um, uh, the um, so this idea of looking at both ends of the inliner at once is a is novel. Um, Nidal, I think it's fair to say this still needs more work before it's finished. Have you got any data you can share, any sort of quantitative data of where you think you're going to get to? Well, actually, it's um, a little bit tricky. Uh, uh, we're still working on that. Uh, we're still uh, trying to uh, uh, bring solid uh, uh, test cases that shows uh, exactly uh, uh, where uh, the mutual inliner uh, beats uh, other uh, uh, in uh, uh, it's uh, a lot messy than uh, any other test cases that you can uh, write you need to beat the compiler in optimizing things to synthesize uh, uh, small tests that can bring you to uh, some sort of uh, uh, um, graph or result where where you can uh, uh, have it. Okay. Um, the other question I had was to, to tie back to Ibrahim's work. I mean, you've worked, I know, because you've worked with me on it, the, um, you've worked on code size optimization for RISC-V for over two years now, I think. And one of my questions is looking at the new ideas from Ibrahim, do you see any implications either for your inliner technology or for op compiler optimization for code size in general? Well, uh, actually, uh, yes, when, when, when you uh, start digging uh, in, in uh, more cases, you will find uh, uh, the weak points and uh, I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity to try and uh, um, list the the weak points and uh, uh, try working on that. Oh, good. Okay. Um, any other questions? No. So, Nidal, thank you for that talk. Um, uh, sorry, sir. Ibrahim, yes, Ibrahim. Yes. I'm wondering ahead. if there is any paper or anything I can see on this, like written. For, for about that uh, alongside the presentation. Yeah, we are working on uh, on that. Uh, uh, Professor Yossi will uh, uh, write a paper on uh, the mutual inliner. Uh -huh. Excellent, thank you. If, if, if when you get it, like can pass it, that would be really nice to see. Read the yeah, I'll already. make sure uh, I'll make sure you get uh, uh, the paper when it's published. Uh, and uh, the intention is, to, of course, as much of this goes upstream as possible. Is that correct, Nidal? Uh, sorry, Jeremy, can you? Are you are you're intending this work should go upstream into LLVM. Is that correct? Yes. Well, uh, uh, this will be our final uh, uh, step in this work. Uh, to make it uh, 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 upstream so uh, everyone can uh, uh, use it. We saw that the uh, uh, the LVM inliner uh, is holding back uh, from us uh, in other targets and other compilers in code size. And we believe if we overcome this, uh, uh, um, this issue in the inliner, a mutual inliner or any other way, uh, then we will have uh, a, a, we will have a, a good a result in code size that we can use, such as a, a GCC a compiler. So yes, we need a lot of mutual inliner. This sure can uh, help other people. So we will have it uh, uh, upstream. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much, Nidal. A very useful update there. And um, I've been, because we've been working with you on this, I'm, I'm a bit familiar with it, so I'm glad you had the opportunity to share more widely a very interesting piece of work. Um, 